that sometimes, you know, the foreigner actually is the problem. Um, so I represent a global telecom company called Verizon. So Verizon would be a competitor in the United States to AT&T, think AT&T. So they also have a global organization structure which rolls out into Asia Pacific and I'm part of the Asia Pac HR and talent acquisition team. Back in 2013, they had acquired a telematics, a market leading telematics firm in the United States, which was going through a global expansion. They were rolling out greenfield businesses in Stuttgart in Germany and in Wuhan in regional China. So as part of the Asia Pac uh, HR and talent acquisition function, as I mentioned, I was the project leader responsible for the China part of that expansion. The issue that we were faced with was that we had no capability on the ground in regional China. We therefore had to go to the market to discover what capability existed um, and who would be uh, able to support us in, in our need for um, quite large scale hiring in, in short time scales. And very hard to find skills as well. We needed about 50 people in that first year in very bleeding edge technology skill sets in, in the telematics industry. So we managed to find a partner who were based in Shanghai and they were going to be uh, the people on the ground doing the candidate sourcing and, and, and interviewing and presenting shortlisted candidates to us. We then had a, a technical manager or a group of a small group of technical managers that were based in Wuhan. Uh, and at the far end of the scale, we had the senior technical management and the leadership group based in Atlanta in Georgia. So really, if you can imagine the, the project situation, there were four endpoints. So there was Shanghai, where the recruiters were based. Uh, there was myself in uh, Melbourne in Australia. Uh, we had the Wuhan team for the technical input, and then we had the, the line managers in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And when you think about that, there are two groups of people who, who may or may not have a passport, who may or may not have left their home countries in time, and also who have, um, although very, very fluent business level English at, at each end of a phone line, they would probably have quite pronounced accents. So we were faced with a circumstance and I was very often needing to translate on, on four-way calls between uh, the conference calls between those four groups um, and really act as the, the Southern English, um, should we say, you know, um, translator for, for that group. And this, this was a problem. So we had a, a technical guru, if you like, in Wuhan who would make a decision that somebody had the right skills and the right team fit to help them grow the business. And they would propose that person to a skill set manager who might be a technical end as well, from a, might be a DBA, might be a developer, might be a, a network engineering angle. Um, and the hire would not be approved. So we would go through a debrief situation and it would come down to quite often the communication of the candidate that wasn't deemed um, to be suitable for the uh, US-based counterparts. So the solution that we came to was to um, firstly bring some technology to the table. And at the end of the day, Verizon is a technology company. We're a communication company. We're, we're in the business of, of getting content to eyeballs. So what we put together was a, a video interview solution. And that really helped interviewers and interviewees alike understand and, and comprehend each other. So just as I'm speaking to you today, you're not just listening to my voice, but you're gaining um, visibility of my facial expressions and, and so forth. And that really helped in terms of taking away some of that, that loss of, of understanding of meaning, uh, which was, um, which was a, a problem for us. So to go back to my statement that the foreigner is often a problem, in this case, you can see that I'm referring really not to the non-native English speaker, which in this case was a, you know, a Chinese-based manager, but in fact a, a US-based manager who was born speaking English. So when thinking internationally, and when thinking about expanding your business, uh, it is not always the case that the problem would lie with somebody who is not born speaking English, their first language.